Welcome to the stream. Sorry for the initial troubleshooting. We have the year 2020 and USB still does not work. All the time I have problems with hot unplugging and replugging my devices. Um, so in order to improve the world a bit and write some good software instead of garbage software, of which there is so much out there, uh, let's do some programming. And we are currently working on the LCW decompression for PDF streams. The decompressor that we have now is working fine. It's already quite well tested. So we have a, uh, now a, a suite of generated tests where we use a different implementation, the one in the, in the libtiff library, in order to LCW encode some data streams and we make sure that we can complete the round trip and decode those streams and get back exactly what we put into the uh, libtiff encoder. So we um, make sure that we are completely 100% compatible with this encoder. And that's already, that's going a long way to, to a full test coverage. It is by itself not a full test coverage for some reasons. Uh, one thing is that this libtiff LCW implementation always uses the early change option. The PDF standard uh, defines a filter parameter for LCW decoding uh, that defines at which point exactly the decoder should switch to a larger code size. And there are two options for, for this parameter and we are currently only testing one of them uh, because the libtiff library only supports one of these options. So that's, that's one reason we don't have a full test coverage. There's another reason that um, is somewhat connected to that. I wanted to have test cases that really fill up the lookup table of the LCW decoder. And this lookup table can have up to 4K entries. It turns out that the libtiff encoder stops just shy of completely filling this table. So I, I added some debug output and noticed that it does fill the table up to um, 4093 entries. So just too shy of completely fitting the table, which makes perfect sense because you would normally have to keep at least one table entry free for the special case in the LCW decoding that I have discussed in previous episodes. And also, if you're interested in that, uh, check out my YouTube video on LCW decoding. So we need one extra entry for this special case. Uh, and because the libtiff decoder has this early change option, it, um, it stops one slot earlier to fill the table. It stops exactly at that point where it thinks that if it would cause another entry to be added, the decoder would go to 13 bits, with, which is not within the uh, TIFF and PNG, uh, P TIFF and PDF specifications, which define that the code length is only allowed to rise up to 12 bits. So it makes sense. Nevertheless, I added a synthetic test that generates its own data stream that does not stop uh, at this point, actually, I mean, the encoder does not stop. It generates a clear table command, which resets the table to the initial table. Uh, but I created a synthetic test stream. Let's see where we have it. Mm. 
yeah, this one. Um, this creates a stream with the explicit purpose of filling up the table completely. I actually, I don't know what we should precisely do in this case in the decoder. Should we regard it as an error that we did not get a clear table command in time? Uh, I'm not sure, so I will, I will put a, a note into my implementation that I'm not completely sure about that. Let's see, where do we have that? That's base 85, that's the CW here. So, we will put a note here um, that maybe it is already an error condition if we have completely filled up the table because we have no slot left for this special case. And maybe we should expect every encoder to generate clear table codes um, in time to avoid this situation. It's just, I don't know if that is actually, I did not, I did not read anything in the specifications if that is actually something we should do. Because it would also be fine from our point of view in the decoder, it's fine to fill up the table and just stop creating new entries. That's completely fine. It's just the encoder must expect exactly that behavior because it must adapt its the code it's, it produces to this behavior. And anyway, the most important point is that we don't have any buffer overruns or anything in that case. And so that's why I made this special test case that checks against this. And I'll make here a note uh, to clarify Should we raise an error in the case of SN used is the full 4K. And I don't know, but there are pro and con arguments. So the, the pro argument is um, if uh, in this case, we do no longer have, we do no longer um, have a valid code free for the special case. Uh, for the special case, code equals sn used. A limit of 12 bit code maximum <coughs> code length. That's the argument in favor of erroring out the, the con is that actually uh, it's kind of an unnecessary restriction if the encoder expects us to not fail because the encoder can, um, can just use the existing 4K tables and not, uh, not um, assume that we are adding new ones. So I don't know what the decoders actually, I, I guess that I guess that probably all decoders will generate the clear table codes, but they wouldn't strictly have to. You can keep uh, decoding perfectly fine with a full table um, as long as that is what the encoder expects us to do. Actually, in this case, I mean, clearing the table can be wasteful, right? Because the table has learned properties of the, of the data. And normally, you, you would only want to clear the table if the properties of the data stream change so that other sequences become more common and so on. 
And otherwise, if, if the, the properties of the data remain the same, normally you would think that keeping the table as it is uh, and just using the existing sequences is actually uh, better for, for data compression than scrapping the table and starting to build it from scratch. So that's, that's the argument in the other direction. Okay, now that we have documented this for um, our future selves, there is a small unit test, a, a small test, a small case that is not yet um, covered by the generated data. The generated data always has at least one byte in the uncompressed data. So what I want to test is empty, empty sequences. So test zero length uh, uncompressed data. The compressed data is never allowed to, allowed to be zero length because at least it must contain an end of data code. Uh, we will have multiple cases here, so I'm creating the struct. So let's make an array of cases that we want to test. Uh, the first one is the, the, the most minimal case. That is that we have just two input bits. Actually, we need to do this differently. So the case that we just have two input bits, uh, bytes, sorry. Um, that's not the one. That would be a table clear command, which is uh, 256 decimal. We need 257. So it should have, um, yeah, a one, then a one, seven zeros and a one. So, that, so that's, um, That's a single end of data code, which is 257 decimal as a nine bit value. Actually, uh, as we are only testing zero length, we don't need the expected here. Uh, a second case that we want to check is because normally an encoder will not produce this. Typically encoders start with a clear table command. We do not, I don't know, we, we could even treat it as an error if we don't get a, a clear table as the first command, but I mean, basically the algorithm works fine without it because the table is cleared at the beginning anyway. So I wonder why they, why they do that. Um, but let's, let's say first we get a, a clear table. And then a single end of data. So that's a bit annoying that we have to do that by hand here, the assembling of the codes. I mean, we could do it differently. We could, we could put the codes here and generate the bytes, but that's maybe a bit too smart. So we have nine bits here. So yeah, and then we have four zero. 
and <clears throat> let's just write it down. It's easier for us. So that's the that's the clear table command, and then we have a one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros and a one. So that should be, yeah, that should be nine. Yeah, that's nine. So we have four, 40, 40. That's this one. Um, Another one that I want to check is <clears throat> two times clear table, then a single end of data code. So here we would have the zero here, and then one, and then um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be 80, Forty, twenty, twenty. That's two times clear table, and then an end of data. And the final, the final case that I would like to check, I think, is a clear table, and then two times end of data, because I mean a redundant end of data should not be a big problem for us. So we have this one, then we have the end and again an end. So that would be 80, 40, 60, 20. So let's check all of these cases. Do we all, yeah, we already have such a loop. That's nice. Um, let's for convenience sake, copy the, the values out. And then let's do, you do the usual dance, setting up a test. Oh yeah, this is something that we also want to do probably. Uh, mo very varying the buffer size. That's that's very interesting here in this case. So let's do that as the nested loop. We work with all kinds of different puffer sizes. Only the small ones are really interesting in this case. E even 16 is, is um, I think even, I mean, just the first few very small buffer sizes are interesting here. The input buffer sizes will uh, be randomized anyway because that's what our test data stream does. So when it ha hands the data to the decoder, it will chunk it up into randomized pieces in order to test uh, the robustness um, of the of the stream handling. And so we set up this this. The raw data stream, um, actually, uh, this is too complicated. We don't need that. No, don't need to dynamically allocate anything here. We we'll just make this up to four and assert that buff size does not exceed size of our buffer here. Oh yeah, that's something I always forget. The predictor stuff is still something we need to do. Okay, early change. We should probably also iterate over early change.
just to test <coughs> both both of these cases. It should not make it any difference here. But let's cover it. And so we init the stream and then I think, I mean, the only thing that we need to do is to check that the stream says it does not have any data, right? That's, that's all we need. Uh, expect false data stream has bytes left. Must not. Let's check it twice and let's also check that it does not generate an error. That's all we need, I think. In such cases, I always like to check the number of uh, tests. The thing is, you know, um, if you have loops in unit tests and so on, it's very easy to make a mistake <clears throat> and actually not not execute any tests at all. And I want to guard against that. So let's count the inner loop. And what do we expect? We have four cases, um, each with with and without early change and each with four different buffer sizes. So that's what we, what we expect to do. I'm afraid that I have reached my daily coffee limit now. That's a bit. Um, that's a bit deplorable. Oh, we made some mistakes, it seems. Number of tests failed. Why that? Oh, <laughs> you see how you see how important that is to do things like that, so just to catch these stupid mistakes like this one. Oh, and also, okay, I go, I don't go up to buffer size four, so. That's why it had two times, two times three, not two times four. But you see, it's, it's something simple like that. You can easily forget it. And, and you think your unit test is working fine. That's why another thing that I always do in my, yeah, no, it's fine. In my tests is I check sensitivity. Let's say by, by doing that, just messing the test up, recompiling. and checking what it what it is going to do actually i'm not sure if uh, maybe the test data is still valid so let's see yeah it's it's still valid because i probably messed up the second the second end of data that is actually redundant so uh, let's mess up the clear table or let's mess up another one that doesn't have the, the redundant. Stuff. Let's mess this up. Uh, it seems there's some serious weather uh, coming up outside will be nice and cozy in here for programming. Yeah, now it fails. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, so 
this test is done. Now for the more interesting stuff. I think now we have good enough test coverage that we can start to tweak uh, the implementation a bit. Uh, but first, I, what we do not yet look at is performance. I want to get a rough idea how, how well our decoder performs. I don't want to make it crazy fast at this point uh, because there is simply no, no need to, um, to put that much effort into it. But I, I do want to have first a rough idea how well it performs. And the second thing is I want to tweak a few things to at least um, plug some low hanging fruit for speeding up the algorithm. So everything that we can do, let's say within the stream, uh, the, the, the duration of the stream today, just uh, invest a couple of hours or so and make it at least not stupidly slow. And later when the, the product that I'm working on develops, we will see is the LCW decoder one of the bottlenecks or not. <clears throat> and if not, we, there's no need to invest further effort. If it's not, if it wouldn't be noticeable to the user. So if the speed up is not, um, not something that the user could possibly notice then it, it isn't worth, worth the effort. For this, um, to do this, we need a large test case um, and we need to go to a release build. We need a large test case because we want to, we will run it several times to see if the numbers we get, if they are stable and um, <clears throat> We need it to be large for two reasons. Uh, we need the, um, the profiling overhead to become as low as possible. And the second thing is I want something that does not, I want a test case that does not fit into a, a first level cache, for example. So I really want to, uh, to do the, the fetching in, into the first level cache of, of a large data stream. <clears throat> so that mostly only a, a small portion of the data and the lookup table should be in first level cache. So let's tweak our generator that generates to, to generate at least one large test case. <clears throat> Currently we only have up to 65k, which is, I mean, it would exhaust the first level cache, but um, I want to have like a megabyte or something. Yeah, probably a megabyte will already be interesting. So let's make it just our first test case. So, <clears throat> sorry, um, we will make, so two to the 10, no, two to the 20th is a megabyte, right? And actually, uh, we will not, for this one, we do not want length variation. So, So 
So we will be testing exactly a megabyte, a megabyte of uncompressed data. I don't know if this will actually, let's see if it will work because the thing is we generate actually a TIFF file here with this generator that has only it's an image that has only a single row and and so it will have a row with one million pixels and i'm not sure whether the this um the tool we are using supports images of such a size so let's let's see if that works oh what did we do wrong We crashed. Let's just to be sure, let's copy the random seed that we used. And let's try again. Let's see if it does not depend on the seed. Okay, so we crash every time it seems. So let's let's look at where we crash. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected to crash at this point honestly access violation where Okay, in the C runtime, when we do the mem, oh, I think I know what might be the problem. I'm jumping to the conclusion. I think I know what might be the problem. We probably, because <clears throat> what we do here in order, I mean, first we fill the array with uh, random data, but random data is not, so pseudo random data is not a good test case for a data, data compression, decompression round trip because random data compresses very poorly and is, is not typical in that regard. So we, we inject some data that compresses rather well. And here I think we make a, a, mista a mistake uh, because we we overrun the buffer of this data probably. So yeah, that's the problem. And we will need to check how well our test data compresses. Whether we, okay, this is, uh, they are really not that large, those numbers, we can cast them. <clears throat> we will need to check yeah, now it, no, it is working. Um, we will need to check the compression ratio. We want to have it in a range of, let's say, maybe two to three, something, something not, not too crazy, not too low and not too high. And let's see what we got.
Okay, it will actually be not so easy to see here, but here we are in line nine. Let's remember that. No, I don't want the answer. Um, Twenty-seven two four five. So we have this many rows of data, roughly. Nine two seven two. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good sign. We have exactly this number of, yeah, we have exactly one megabyte and uh, it compresses rather well. So that's, that's nice. Let's see what our factor is, our compression factor. Sorry, what did I do? Why, why, do, why no type P, e, type P? E? Yeah, type P, e, type e again. We have a compression ratio, if I would not miss, mess my numbers up, of 2.4. That's perfect. Between 2 and 3. Very nice. That sounds like a reasonable test case. Uh, I actually didn't want to... Did not want to quit, actually. Fine. Now we need <clears throat> we need uh, measurements. Let's create a test that will only run if we are in the release build. Still don't know where <coughs> my modifiers are on the, my new keyboard. So we actually want to do the same thing like here. Actually, maybe maybe it's just easier to do it here. I think it's just easier to do it directly inside this test case. So <clears throat> we set everything up, the test data stream, we set up the test data stream. Oh, we actually don't want the test data stream in, for the profiling because the test data stream really stresses the user code it really divides the data into very irregular and small chunks and passes these little chunks to the user data to, in order to stress its buffer handling. So what we actually want to do in the debug build and the release build, sorry, In the for the release build, we actually want to use a simple array that just is as fast as possible with providing the data. Okay, that's actually the same in both cases. Sorry, data stream init. And let's explain what we are doing here uh, for the release build. We want to provide data, input data as fast as possible. Oh, 
order to allow meaningful profiling of the actual decoder because otherwise we are just profiling our test data stream and that that's no good I mean, it might be a bit of an unrealistic use case to really have a buffer with one, a stream with one megabyte input buffer. But because this way, this way, we do not check the code paths that, we do not profile the code paths that are, are doing the refetching of the data but I mean those are the react should be the react cases anyway because reasonable stream buffers will always be at least several kilobytes so at least three decimal orders of magnitude are below the per code stuff that we do So we have fast input. Yeah, the next thing is we also want a reasonable, reasonably sized output buffer. So in the in the test case, we do this. We should actually put some entropy here. Um, let's do that right now. Let's inject some some entropy. Uh, the buffer, it must always be at least one. Actually, let's make a helper function that can do that because it's so annoying to otherwise. We always want at least one byte buffer size and yeah, maybe up to eight. I mean, only the small buffer sizes are really interesting because if this decoder can can do everything correctly with an 8 byte buffer it also can do everything correctly with an 8000 byte buffer there is just there are no low, no larger structures being handled and so on so that should be fine let's just quickly make this utility function that um, does this should be very similar to the signed version we don't need the casts A little bit sim simpler than let's write like this min plus okay so we have the buffer size reasonable for the oh no it's not yet reasonable we will make it let's pick some intermediates or should we should we also pick a very large let's make it also a megabyte for now we are really not that Or let's make it for 4, 4K because I want to have a, a little bit of the buffer handling stuff inside. 
I mean, it shouldn't make a difference anyway, but... Oh, wait, the problem is how do we time stuff? I think, yeah, we, we should use a very large buffer because point being, point being, we actually need to time uh, this function. But we will do better than this. We will We do want to time actually only the fetch call because because this one also copies the data out and we don't want it in our profile. So what we actually want to time is the data stream fetch call. This is what we want to time. Do we already have some timing here? No. But we do have timing in our JBIG2 profile stuff. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeah, another thing is that we, we probably want to repeat this. Actually, I think I have some better timing in the PDF parser currently. We, want, we will want to make a histogram. We will calculate, calculate a cycle swap. Maybe cyclists per byte will be a too small number. Should we cyclists per kilobyte? Yeah, that's nice that actually our histogram will aut automatically adapt to the right bin width. That's something we developed on stream even. So actually in the case of the release build we will want to actually put a nested loop around the whole thing. Uh, we want to do this, let's say, let's first do it a hundred times.
In the end, we want to print our histogram, of course, which is done like this. No. I want my Molokai card. Um, <clears throat> um, this shows some this okay and now we just need the measurement and actually uh, what we also want to do here is that we don't need to repeat the other tests so if j if j is not zero and i is positive then we break so let's time the fetch call No, what do I want here? Okay, I just do it directly like this. So input size. <clears throat> I mean, we might want to round this, but that actually, in our case, we have a exactly a megabyte, so this does not. Does not create any problems. No, still, still typo. Let's see if this stuff basically compiles and then let's make a release build. Good with that, we checked. So the debug build is no longer compiled. Let's see if this is fixed now. Okay, let's see if the test still passes. Yeah, test is fine. So let's go to release, or oh, actually let's go to profile
See, that's why you should do profiling so that you don't create software that is so slow like this crap. And let's also do a sanity check. <clears throat> we will look at the at the generated code. We have far too many compilation steps. So CMake is really, oh, we have problems. Sarkosburg. Line 80. CMake is really not handling this very well. Are we missing a declaration here? But definition should, I mean, definition should already be enough. No, it should be fine. <laughs> Oh, we are lacking the whole, the whole histogram stuff. That's the problem. Well, we should probably also use the namespace. Actually, this is not what I wanted to do. Let's make here. This works anyway. Test context undeclared. What is the first problem? Nine eight two. What does it say about names, bases, stats? Yeah, one thing we should clean up probably is that this should really be completely qualified. That might be causing a problem. Why is this stuff compiling everything 5,000 times? <clears throat> I mean, I made libraries for a reason, right? I need to really clean up the build system and probably get rid of CMake. And just use something simpler. I'm 
namespace definition. Why does it talk about a namespace definition? That's nonsense. Where do you see a namespace definition here? Oh, there is a namespace definition. It has an anon anonymous namespace inside. Okay. So this macro can actually not be used locally. This has to be I could make a local variant of this. So don't get the sequence of compilation here. Why, why does it not start compiling with what failed previously? That would make so much more sense. Oh yeah. Um, That's another thing, we should only do this timing stuff for case zero. Okay. Let's go to a more reasonable font size here. So we can actually see something. Yeah, this is the second thing is something that we will probably get rid of now. This is just to check for obvious patterns in the in the order of values. So, for example, we would see here if if only the first few iterations would be very slow and the rest would be fast, uh, we would see that here, and that would be a sign, for example, that we have some cache effects going on. It would actually be interesting to um, to make temporarily tune the test case down to to just one kilobyte or so and see whether we see some some cache effects. Maybe that this would be interesting, right? I mean, one thing that I want to check here is, I think I want to make the buffer size equal to the expected size for profiling.
this is just something I, I do for fun now because I'm interested in seeing whether we see any obvious cache effects when we have small data. Let's make this a kilobyte. With a kilobyte, the input, the output, and the lookup table should all fit within first level cache. So you would normally expect a significant speed up after the first iteration, right? We need to regenerate our test data. Rebuild everything. So, but let's look at the, yeah, this is now very small. I mean, we do see that the first one is the is is in the maximum bin. We do not see how large exactly. Uh, we do see a, a speed up trend here. Roughly, I think. So horizontal axis is, is the, the iteration um, number and, and vertical axis is, is time with uh, faster being up. So we see that the code is getting faster. It just would be interesting if the first one is this very large one or this one. I guess it's a very large one. So let's also print, let's also print the sample buffer that should allow us to see to see that. Okay, even, even higher times in this case. Okay, that's very strange. And that's very strange that actually the, the first one was rather fast. And the slowest one was number 44. That's strange. That's not what I would have expected. Let's try again. Now we have the first ones down here. It's strange that we... Largest one was number two, number one is here. That would be more of the pattern that we expect. It's also not that much slower at the beginning, but it is rising up with iteration number. 
I mean, maybe we are seeing some artifacts otherwise when we have these huge times that we might be seeing some artifact of our not very reliable measurement method. Because something like this is more what I would expect. The first one is down here and then we get faster iterations. So the first one was the slowest one. So index zero was the slowest one. That's more like what I would expect. But let's go back to a megabyte. I just, sometimes I like to spend a bit of time on, on things like this to check my understanding. And for example here, yeah, it is a bit humbling maybe sometimes so we see okay we do not fully understand that behavior of the code so it was not such a clear not such a clear pattern of of cash effects as i would have maybe expected but it's also a good reminder that things are maybe a bit more complicated here and more artifacts are going on than we think or might hope we have a very crude um, measurement method, just taking the, the timestamp counter. So we can get all kinds of, of measurement artifacts for sure. So let's let's get real. Let's actually measure something. So we should no longer see an obvious pattern in the lower part. Yeah, also here we don't see an obvious pattern that we that the things get faster with time looks relatively random that's a good sign in this case we don't want to have a large speed up with iteration number so let's see how concentrated the histogram is not very concentrated i think i will increase the iteration number for the profiling to get more statistics. Let's do a thousand times. And let's actually get rid now of these, of these things. take a little longer now. Yeah, the histogram looks definitely smoother. We will probably be looking at the median or something. I think the median should not have the median should not have too many artifacts in it. Maximum, for example, we can forget this. This will be full of measurement artifacts, but median or maybe one of the maybe something like the twenty-five percentile. I mean, even the minimum is, even the minimum is quite interesting, right? 
but the minimum could have a lot of luck in it so i think probably it's reasonable to look at the median i guess so where are we we have about 76000 cycles per kilobyte <clears throat> uh, that's about let's say seven let's let's pretend a kilobyte is 1000 byte for now that's about 76 cycles per byte that's quite a lot i mean the, the question in cases like this is always what would really fast mean and that's a difficult question because without having other implementations to compare to it's difficult to know how fast you could be. You would really have to analyze the microarchitecture of your CPU and find theoretical arguments. How fast could this CPU solve this problem? And that would tell you what really fast would mean. Um, you really would have to and it, that's a very complicated analysis in i mean maybe for lcw for such a simple algorithm it's not that complicated but in general it's a very complicated problem because you need to how to formulate this you need to solve two interlocked problems one problem is how should I implement this algorithm for this microarchitecture? And the second is, how fast can the microarchitecture then execute my implementation? And those problems are interconnected because <clears throat> only when you know how you implement it, you know which micro ops will be executed in the end, and then you can answer how much of it the microarchitecture can do in, in a given number of cycles and so on. So that's, that's a complicated thing to analyze generally. It's much easier if you have just, you know, you have some implementations to compare to. That's <clears throat> much, much uh, easier. But even that is a lot of work because getting good numbers for any, for any benchmark is, is not, not easy. But we will just do, so we will not be too interested now in answering how fast are we absolute, absolutely. We will now start to tweak the code and see um, how much easy progress can we make in, in, in getting the code to be faster. The first thing we will check is how stable our numbers are. So now we have this uh, 76,000. So let's just um let's just run this thing again and see whether our numbers are reasonably stable or whether they move all over the place wow That's exactly why I wanted to check this. Wow, we have a lot of, a lot of noise in there. I didn't expect the median to have so much noise. So clearly we cannot use, we cannot use the median. Let's see. Let's see if the 1% percentile has also so much noise. So actually, does this have statistic functions? This, this calculator? I'm not sure. Let's just fry up a mathematical notebook to quickly 
Это сам станция. So, that is disappointing that we have so much noise in the medium. It's incredible. It means we have really frequent artifacts destroying our measurement. That's a bit of a downer. I mean, something that I noticed that when I'm, when I'm streaming, I have a much harder time to benchmark things because OBS is using quite a lot of CPU and maybe due to hyper-threading and cache effects and so on, it's really messing with the general behavior of my CPU. The problem is maybe that for this one megabyte we are taking such a long time that we have a lot of time to accumulate interruptions and so on by the operating system. And I mean even Even the 1% percent percentile is, is not that stable. Let's as a, as a last resort, let's see how stable the minimum is. best of 1000 runs. Hey, Pascalo. Welcome. How are, you, how are you doing, guys? Your party of three. Or <clears throat> do we make you an off by one error? Are you a party of four? <clears throat> we are currently doing some profiling here with a very disappointing methodology it seems because we're getting a lot of noise in our measurement. <clears throat> Hi. So Did you stream something uh, before yourself, Pascalo? Okay, I think <laughs> I 
I think the the best of 1000 is a lot more stable than anything else we tried. I think we can work with that. I mean, we, yeah, it's very flaky. I mean, I'm first, honestly, I'm not a performance expert by any standards. And then, as I already said, um, my very crude profiling technique, it really notices that OBS is running uh, and I have much better results when I'm not streaming, but yeah, that's no good now. Um, but now I think actually the best of 1000 runs is getting usable. So we have less than 1% standard deviation with the fewer tried, so that's that's something we can use. So let's let's get into tweaking tweaking the code. The first thing that I I want to do. So the code we are working on is a very straightforward implementation of LCW decompression. It's actually quite small. It's, let's see, the whole code is, including all the error handling, is 170 lines, roughly. You're also working on compression. That's funny. D did you pick my stream because of the LCW, or was it just a coincidence? So first thing that we are we are wasting probably quite some cycles on is this loop here. So the the code words for LCW are not byte aligned. They are, for example, nine bits, ten, eleven, twelve bits, and <clears throat> we are getting a sequence of bytes, and we must assemble them into these code words. And currently we have this very straightforward while loop here. And this while loop is for sure wasteful because um, okay, you're coping to a separate system. That's probably a good idea, yeah, to have as little running on the system besides your code on the test as possible. But I don't have a second system here actually currently. Um, I mean, I could do it on my server, but that would be a lot of work. Um, this while loop is running at most two times, I think, and it's always running at least one time. So it's already wasteful to, to write it this way because this branch is then probably badly predicted here. And so let's clean this up a bit. We always need at least one input byte from the stream, that's clear. So let's just unroll this a bit. We are also, I mean that we are using this function here is also wasteful, but this is something we can look into later. Um, so let's always get one byte and then actually we only ever need at most a second byte. So for the debug build we will put an assertion here that we have enough bits buffered. Okay, that we actually already have the assertion, fine. Um, let's see if that made any difference.
<clears throat> we should have much better branch prediction now, at least in this portion of the code. <laughs> and we, do, we don't see any improvement, I guess. That's perfectly in the noise. That's how it goes, people. Yeah, we are losing we are losing the cycles in, in other places. So it seems that actually the branch prediction was quite decent. Yeah, it's in the noise. So I think we can we can leave the change in because should we leave it in? I mean, I think the while loop is really is really not that nice when we know that we need at most two two bytes. So one thing we can definitely try is. we can definitely try to improve to to help the compiler with the register allocation a bit because currently we are using all of these things directly from the struct and i had cases like this <clears throat> where it was quite helpful to copy things okay um yeah, thanks for <clears throat> thanks for that offer. I think I think it would probably require quite a lot of setup, right? So um, I think for now I'm I'm I will stay on this system. But but thanks a lot for the offer. That's that's very kind of you. Um, So I had a case for the JBIG2 decoder where it was quite beneficial to localize some stuff that we use. So let's try that. Um, what do I'm looking for? I'm looking for the LCW stream so the bit reservoir and the number of bits buffered this is all stuff that we can definitely localize and bits buffered and bits per code and the bit reservoir itself So we will just copy this out. Uh, Vtune, that's that's a good that's a good point. No, I did not. I did not. Would be very interesting. Um, I don't have experience with Vtune. I saw it used on on YouTube already in in Casey's stream, and it looks very interesting. And I will definitely make use of it in the future on the stream. Um, maybe, as I think not today, but uh, because I don't have it set up and so on, I'm definitely interested in using it. And maybe that would be a, a logical next step. Maybe for just for Plucking some low-hanging fruit performance-wise, it's maybe a bit more than I want to invest in currently, but I, I will definitely use it on the stream, I think, in the 
if if my CPU actually I I don't do you know if if Ivy Bridge already supports what you need for VTune? Does it have all these performance counters and stuff? Because I'm I'm on a rather old CPU here currently. And I don't know if it has all the necessary features. So in the end, we will just copy things back into our stream structure. And then we will just use the local ones here and hope that this helps the compiler helps the compiler to do some reasonable register allocation. It's an Intel CPU, yeah, but um, yeah, not a very recent one. It's, um, I think, Ivy, Ivy Bridge. Sorry, typing badly. Let's see if that actually still works. That's the first thing. We don't want to have fast but broken code. I mean, I think I'm quite sure that we are a very long way from fast with this decoder. So it's. Inter CPU from. from 2011 okay that's good news yeah then it will work for me i think that's good to know oh looky looky that was that's that's more than noise this improvement that is looking like more than in the noise. Let's do four runs. <clears throat> so again, coping something outside of a struct did some good. Yeah, definitely. We are winning here. That looks like a, like what? It looks like, yeah, it's not 10%, but maybe 5% speed up. That's not too bad for the first. For the second, oh, okay, it's the second attempt that we made. The second attempt at making this code less stupidly slow. So getting reasonably stable numbers now. So let's see, we had this and now we have 
what do we have now? Um, I should actually not retype those numbers, but yeah, that's more than 5%. Actually, no, okay, yeah, numbers got more stable, strange, uh, maybe just luck. Okay, that was a success. Uh, let's have a look at our generated code, by the way. We are looking at PDF lib, data stream. <clears throat> it's called LCW. Fetch. <clears throat> so here the outer loop starts. Yeah, there's another idea that I have, but let's first, let's first take a rough look at the code. Where does the inner loop start? Is there so much going on before the inner loop? No, this must already be the inner loop. I've missed the loop label somehow. LL, those LL are the loop labels, right? Don't we have a second loop label? Oh, we have. Okay, it seems that not all of the backward branches are called LL. Because where do we have the... Yeah, we have a lot of inlining here from the fetch function. I'm, I'm missing something here. Oh, um, am I misremembering? I'm, I might, I might be actually remembering <clears throat> another piece of code. Yeah, yeah, this actually has only a single loop. That's fine. I was misremembering. I was thinking about the base eighty-five stream decoding. <clears throat> so it's a bit hard to get an overview of the code because we have a lot of inlining and a lot of i mean most of this should be jumped over most of the time all the the error handling and so these should be nicely predicted branches to just jump over everything the next thing i want to try so Apart from, apart from the error handling and so on, the code is reasonably compact. We have a few opportunities that I'm still thinking about. So one thing is um, 
in the LCW decoding, we are replaying sequences from a lookup table. And one thing that I thought about is I think that a lot of these sequences will actually be just two bytes, two byte sequences. It will be interesting. Maybe we should actually make a histogram. Uh, we should, yeah, let's do that. Let's make a histogram of the sequence lengths. That, that will be somewhat interesting. And uh, let's create a histogram here and let's make um, a flag um, so that we can activate sampling only for what we want to see. I actually, I mean, um, probably it doesn't matter because we generate all our test data in the same way, right? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Um, so we know what exactly what we're looking at. And let's, where do we get the sequence length? I think we get it here. No, not here. Here, uh, where we have everything in the replay buffer. So the replay buffer count should be sequence length minus one. Um, it's called LCW sequence length. And we add one plus the replay. Actually, the replay buffer, this is some, the replay buffer count is something we also might want to localize. So let's do that as the next thing. But first I want to see this histogram. So we want to activate the sampling here and deactivate it afterwards. And at the end, we want to show our histogram uh, LCW sequence length. Um, we actually will need to declare our histogram. We don't yet have something for that, right? Normally it should be, should be as easy as that. Felix, welcome. <laughs> uh, 
That's a nice nick. So I misprogrammed everything. Cannot convert. Oh yeah. That's just a missing ampersand. This ampersand is missing. So what are your guesses about the sequence length? As I said, I mean, I would expect two byte sequences to dominate. And if so, that's an op that's a an opportunity for optimization. Oh, linking error. Why the ah oh, oh we we were in a namespace probably that's we are in name here where the, we are in namespace we are in a namespace we need to go for this stuff we need to go outside of the namespace. Um, are we in the name? No, no, here we are not in the namespace. That should be fine. I think we are fine now. Let's see what kind of sequence length you have. I mean, it's of course very data dependent, but I hope that my data with a compression ratio between two and three, so we check that the compression ratio is in a reasonable range. Um, I hope that that kind of data will be somewhat representable of the typical case. Uh, somewhat representative, I mean. Yes, as I expected, two byte sequences dominate and it's it looks a bit like a power law so that's that looks reasonable actually the three byte sequences are more frequent than i thought interesting so yeah, but two byte sequences definitely are they are one third of all the sequences. So now of course we have messed up our timing because we do the histogram stuff. So let's uh, let's let's actually save this stuff because for future reference. Let's save this as LCW sequence length histogram txt. And let's take out the histogram. Uh, current throughput is, let's see, we have, what I'm measuring is cycles per kilobyte and we are currently at, at 54,000 cycles per kilobyte. So I guess nothing to get excited about. So what would be the, so if we, um, that's cycles per kilobyte, so we have 
bytes per cycle. Let's say what is the mean. That would be bytes per cycle. And so just to get an order of magnitude, I have, I think, 2.5 gigahertz. So how do we write it in Mathematica? That I don't remember. <clears throat> so that would be 40, 47, roughly 47 megabytes per second. Is that right? Did I mess it up? Bytes per cycle. Yeah, something like that. So order of magnitude roughly 50 megabyte or let's say, let's be honest, let's say 45 megabyte per second. So what did I want to do? Take this out again. Let's just sanity check that we are back at our 45,000 cycles per kilobyte. <clears throat> Seems reasonable. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I don't want to create the impression that I'm in any way an expert on either data, data decompression or performance programming. I'm not. So. I just want to make this, I want to keep the, the implementation simple and I want to make it not stupidly slow. So that's the goal for today to just um, get done with some low hanging fruit. Yeah, a bit of noise going up to 55. just to have it not embarrassingly slow. Yeah, 45 again. Uh, I mean, most software nowadays is embarrassingly slow and we don't want to be in that camp, right? So first I want to also localize some further variables. So let's see where, where do we still use the struct a lot. The n used is used a lot. No, so that's the table size. Uh, we will definitely 
localize that and let's also localize the replay buffer count Yeah, and use this the obvious candidate. We could also try to play a bit with the data types here. I suspect it will not make a lot of difference. What is actually what is n used? What is the data type of n used? Here it's 16 bit. No idea if that will make any difference. Let's first make it 16 and try 32 just to see if, if things like that make any difference at all. So that was the end used. Um, let's see what other. I mean, something I want to get rid of anyway is this next table size increasing code length. I want to get rid of this completely, but I want to profile this separately. Replay buffer count. Yeah, so I mean, the localizing for sure is not guaranteed to be a win, but my experience in last time with similar code was that it does does usually help. And the first three, the first three that we localized definitely bought us five percent or so, so that's not too shabby. Um, how is the replay buffer count? What is the data type there? Also 16 bit. Yeah, maybe we will try if, if 16 or 32, if that makes any difference at all. Um, status, yeah, sta I mean, status may be rather large, but it has the only hot part of it is the first member. So only the, uh, so I can show you it's, it's, it's just for error information. And the only hot part is the first Boolean, the failed. That's the only thing that is accessed all the time. So you can think of status as basically a pointer to a bool. Um, I mean, of course, it's a pointer to a cache line, right? So you, you're wasting the whole cache line, but uh, there's nothing I can really do about that. So think about it as a pointer to a single cache line. I think that's, that's what status is. So did I, yeah, replay buffer count is done. So let's, Yeah. 
let's see where we are at. Yeah, another another win. So this localizing this definitely. Oh, I, I wanted to write down the number. This localizing definitely is relevant. Liking the relative stability of the numbers. <clears throat> so let's remember this one how much did we get yeah another four percent or so not That's not too bad. Okay, so about the about the the two byte sequences. I was thinking about hmm. but even the two byte sequences are not that easy to optimize. The problem is we are not working from so so to give you some context on that we are not decompressing from one array to another array where we know that the data will fit what we are doing is we are decompressing from one stream buffer to another stream buffer um, and these stream buffers they can be exhausted at any time and then we need to either, if the input stream buffer is exhausted, we need to call a fetch function. If the output stream buffer is exhausted, we just stop. And because we are this the fetch function of the decompression stream, so we just stop and get called the next time when there's space in the buffer. So that this kind of buffer handling complicates, of course, everything a bit. Ah, there's a small thing that I wanted to look at our table. Our lookup table is currently a byte array. And we are doing th something like this to store a 16 bit value, which is, and, and I noticed that the compiler does not optimize this really. So, what I want to try here is to make a reinterpret cast instead. So to reinterpret uh, the pointer As a pointer to 16 bit and dereference that. Uh, 
and maybe some slightly better code will come from that. I, I have no idea if it will make a difference. We have two. So this is where we read the table. Thirty to forty percent by pre-allocating. Yeah, that's quite a lot. Mm. I I don't have this choice here really. I mean, I could make I could make a, a baked optimized version that knows that it has enough space in all the buffers for the case that we actually have this situation. But usually we don't have this situation. It's easier on the input. On the input we might actually, because in the PDF, if we are talking about the PDF file, We might often be able to read the whole uh, input stream because we know its length and we might often be able to read it completely into memory. Uh, but on the output it's a bit more difficult because often with PDF streams you don't know the uncompressed size because the file doesn't tell you what it will be. So where is, where is the other part where we actually built the table? There we also have this, this kind of stuff here. So let's also do a reinterpret cast here of table plus index. I think that's it. That's the two. We only use the table in two places for filling it and for reading it. It's just two places. No, I need to ninja first. Oh, it's S table, of course, not. I mean, we could, this is also something we could we could localize the table pointer this yeah we should try that probably where's the other one here so far localizing was a, was a win whenever we did it so why not try also to localize this Uh, the table is 12 kilobytes maximum. So should fit in first level cache, I think. Wow. People, we are getting somewhere. That was a huge win. Wow. Who would have thought? This unaligned 16-bit axis is so much faster than... Wow. Uh, I, I almost cannot believe it. Okay, you're seeing high delay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can do anything about that. Uh, 
I have no idea. Are there any are there any settings I could tweak to improve that or I don't know. I mean, there's one general setting in, in Twitch where you can tell it whether you are interacting with the audience and I have definitely put that to yes. So it should not buffer a lot of time, I guess. Okay, this, this one was really a lucky one, this 47. But still, I, I mean... Yeah, that was almost too good to be true for such a small change. But still, we never got 51 before, so even that is a win. Yeah, I, I do not I do not suspect that it is actually the chat window itself. I would be surprised if it's that. I, I think it's rather that um, I would guess that the Twitch is just buffering too much of my of my stream before passing it on. And I don't I don't know if I have any way to to influence that. I don't think that OBS is buffering a lot. I am not a proficient OBS user, so I don't know how to tell, but I, I would expect OBS to buffer hardly anything. Yeah, another nice win. Uh, how much is it? It is um, yeah again four percent. We are making progress. Progress. I lost the always on top property. It seems on the chat. Yeah, now it's back. Um, so. What's the next thing we can do? So this was definitely, let's keep this. This was definitely a win. <clears throat> what else could I, yeah. I mean the, the sequence playback, speeding this up, Definitely possible, but a bit involved. Yeah, the next thing I wanted to do is to get rid of this next table in size, increasing code length. I want to get rid of that. I was thinking about doing the following. to calculate this value because that's actually should be should be always equal to this value and to mask that because The problem is we, we are not allowed to increase beyond 12 bits per code. Currently we do this by 
by setting this this uh, funky data number to zero here so that this check can never succeed once we are at the maximum number of bits. So we could get rid of all of that. But the important thing is the check. Let's see, I mean the check could could become slower this way, could also become faster. I don't know. And that's also annoying that we have to add this, this early change. I mean, this is something we could bake actually. We could, we could have two, two versions of the, two versions of the whole decoder, one with early change and one without early change. That's something you could try. Warning, we get a warning. Why do we only get the warning? Oh, maybe it's about precedence. Yeah, it was president stop. We could also avoid the masking. So this change I will keep if it does not make things worse. because it's a cleanup also. I think it's yeah, I have a way to get rid of the masking. We will get rid of the masking by doing a nested, a nested if should be fine because the if is almost never taken. Yeah, I think we have another keeper.
<clears throat> yeah, it's a keeper. It, it's not really faster significantly, but it's a keeper because it is a cleanup. We can, we can remove some awkward code. So that's, that's good. Um, we can actually get rid of the masking here. By by checking inside, because we actually check whether we are allowed to grow, grow the table up here. There's another, we have another opportunity to speed up here because this condition is something we know most of the time and also this one so both of these conditions we know most of the time so there is something we can probably do about that so let's see if this if this was beneficial to get rid of the masking in the in the frequently done check. Okay, we have something seventeen seventy it's still used somewhere. Okay, here it's still used, yeah. This is gone. And so far I'm quite happy. So almost everything that we tried gave us a couple percent or four percent or so. Well, my build system is really screwed up. Everything is building so many times. I'm sorry, I have to answer the phone quickly. Okay, I'm back. Where are we? Oh! What, what is going on?
people what is going on that was a very bad time we had there I mean, let's let's hope that that was a measurement artifact. Yeah, looks like it. So let's think what what could I do next? I mean there's still a bit of stuff to localize, so why not do that? So far it has always been a win. For sure the table pointer is something we can easily put in a local variable. I guess I should have made myself an Excel table or something like that for that. Would be in this case probably more comp more useful than Mathematica. I will do that next time when I do something like this. Yeah, I guess that's in a noise. Oh, I didn't somehow miss that we got slightly worse here, but did, I mean, that's, that could still be in the noise. How is our standard deviation doing? Yeah, yeah, that could be, that could still be noise. That's, that's worth the cleanup of, of removing this data member, I would say. So let's let's do a bit of localizing. We'll localize the table pointer. And why not the replay buffer pointer? So far, we never lost anything by localizing. We actually, these are nice because we don't have to write them back. Oh, the previous code is previous code is also something we should localize. Is this a, I guess this is 16 bytes. Yeah. This is something we need to store back.
Let's see, where do we, okay, now we have the early change is left, the upstream is left. And that's it, I think. That's also a redundant, a redundant check here. Something to consider maybe. So we have localized some more. Uh, we still have these we still have some redundant conditions in the code. So probably control flow is the next next thing next thing I will look at. That's bad. Let's see if this is a systematic problem. I mean, I would be surprised. Hmm. <laughs> That's strange. Okay, we got consistently worse, it seems. It seems. So maybe we, maybe we overdid. Maybe we overdid the localization. Okay, now I don't see what is actually highlighted. That's
How often can you use the word table? didn't want to do that so let's see if we are back to the performance we had before and then let's let's try to go really one by one with using local variables I still need to try to to tweak the data types a bit <clears throat> I should actually only build the executable I, I need. Okay, that has to be that has to be an artifact. And actually, I saw my CPU usage peaking for some reason. It seems OBS is not not quite happy currently. Let's see if we have something else. Causing problems with OBS. Chrome. Nothing really sticking out here. We are back at five one something. Mm -hmm. That's somewhat re repeatable. So I mean, at least the previous code, I would expect that Yeah, five one something, five one one, roughly. Uh, of course, I mean, it could be that if we overdo, overdo it with the local variables, that we just waste, waste an additional cache line or something Uh, 
let's do try at least let's try the previous code I mean, it, it looks like something that obviously would be a candidate. But now I really, I'm a bit sick of pushing these local variables around. So I think the next thing I will look at is the control flow, if we can do something, something to improve the control flow. So let's establish again a baseline with four measurements. Then I will take a short break and then I will look at the control flow. Okay, source, 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 source. Maybe it really doesn't like to have the previous code in a local variable for some reason. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's strange. I cannot, I cannot really explain it, but it doesn't like that. doesn't really like it. Those, yeah, those are not that interesting. So let's now establish a baseline and then do maybe some more interesting stuff. The system again has a bit of thermal problems, I think, that's compounding the profiling measurement issues probably.
Okay. How is the standard deviation doing? Yeah. So plus minus 500 we can ignore, maybe even plus minus 1000 we can, plus minus 1000 we can mostly ignore. So let me take a short break. So let's take a look at the control flow. Um, especially I mean, one thing we could try to is to rearrange control flow a bit to maybe group the, 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 the hottest paths in a better way. I mean, um, for example, I mean this one is this one is a bit stupid because that's the end of data is we only see once normally. On the other hand, this should be a very well predicted branch, for example. But another thing, a more complicated thing that we could look at is. Does this one, this code to append? This check here, whether this is 256. The, the only case the only case where this is 256 is directly after a table clearing command. And we do, we do know, I mean, What we could try because here we here we clear the table here we have to clear the table command and the first code after clearing the table is a bit special because <clears throat> it never adds a table entry so we could get rid of some checks by doing some special casing here and the table clearing code is rather rare. So doing some special casing here, even if it's rather slow, could be a win. And this would look would look like the following. Thing. I mean, we it's a bit ugly because we have to we have to repeat this.
Yeah, this is, I mean, <clears throat> really would like to simplify this stuff. But let's just try it out if it's worth thinking about it all. So let's get ourselves a code. The problem is, again, again, we can have, this could be a table clearing code that is redundant, that, that's stupid, but it could be. So in this case, we would just have to repeat this stuff so we, we could say okay repeat this as long as we are getting table clearing codes no same decoder will, will send us this but you can always get for example malicious code or something that does something stupid like that then we can get the end of data that's just this case I hate really to duplicate this. Maybe we can, could. And otherwise, we know that code is one of the literate bytes. And we don't need, the, the advantage that we have here is, so let's just let's just mark this in some way so that we don't forget this is the new code section. That we might have to throw away again. So the real advantage in this case is that we do not have to do the stuff below. Actually, actually this must be a, not an assertion, but Here we need some error handling. Let's actually do an abort so this is not optimized away, this check, because we will need to do this check. And then we have the advantage that we don't need to do this stuff below. This is this is kind of the error that we need to check, but we don't need this stuff here. So not done this stuff, and we don't need this stuff. But the actual advantage is that we then can simplify this check here.
So it should never be one of these two. In this case, we just do this and we say continue. Oh, there is another thing. Hmm. This check is also sometimes redundant, right? Because, for example, here we know we know that the replay buffer count has to be zero. So we could do something like um, <clears throat> go to next code. and jump directly here. And now I think, I think we should never hit this case either, that the code to a band is 256, because when can it be 256? Only if here the code is 256, and then we are actually in this case where we in the end, at the end uh, go to outward or break. So, Also here we break. So I think this also cannot, because here it's also never set to 256. So I think we could also remove this check. What I don't like is that we are starting now to increase the, the size of the code due to some duplication. Okay, it doesn't really look like a big win. It's probably not worth the code duplication.
Yeah. That's not worth the, the code duplication that we just did. Yeah, not worth it. Not worth it. So let's undo. Now there are a few things we could still do. We could, so one thing is we we could get rid of the this early change thing here by doing code special specialization. Uh, let's get an idea how much this. how much this would help. <clears throat> By hard coding this. could get a test fail now because we're probably running other tests that need that. No, we don't. That's, that's actually a lack of sensitivity. 50, okay. Not too bad. <clears throat> Forty nine. Fifty one, yeah, it's it's not it's not huge if it if it helps at all. 
<clears throat> I mean, yeah, we might have a might have an opportunity here for branch prediction optimization. Okay, this is actually something that we could have removed earlier when we made the special casing for the clear table stuff. That's something that I missed. That's actually something we could try, uh, that we could, we could actually remove this case here because this should be correctly handled also by the more general code below. Let's try this. I didn't want to make. Seems like it's actually getting worse. Yeah, that's not a good idea because this is a very frequent case. On the other hand, this means that maybe uh, maybe 
I should specialize some code here. Yeah, but we cannot really specialize a lot. So I think that's fine. Another thing we can try is we could um, make this special case here a bit larger and remove this redundant check here by duplicating this stuff putting this inside then we would not need this this check and we could check this condition afterwards so we would get rid of one one check And we would get rid of this all together here. <clears throat> Probably also in the noise, this improvement. <clears throat> and then I won't do it because it increases the code size. This is marginally significant.
marginally significant. So maybe nothing to scoff at. Let's see with the 50,000. Yeah, we are above 50 megabyte per second. So yeah, I think I think I will keep it even though I don't like the duplication of this code. It's not a lot of code, but get rid of that. How can we? Yeah. Most of this. I think <clears throat> I will start to wrap this up for today because I'm getting tired. Um, let's do some, there's one small thing I still want to, to try. Maybe two small things and then we will wrap up. Three small things <laughs> because I mean what we could still try is this idea with the with skipping this test if we know that we don't need it Ah, that's a bit difficult because because we would need to duplicate this code here. We could try though. Could try that though. Let's just try it. I mean, we definitely could do it in this case. So if we clear the,
We definitely could do it in this case. And then we maybe can skip this check. Yeah, I think we can then check, we can skip this check. And what we did now <clears throat> seems like it could only be an improvement, but maybe a very small one. I don't see. Normally it should not should not make us slower. I mean almost everything can <clears throat> can make you slower by some strange effects of alignment or cache or cache or something. So can always be, but otherwise, <clears throat> yeah, I think within the noise it made no difference. But we, yeah, we don't really use yet its full potential. Yeah, I think we are, we are the same. Um, what we could do is now is To actually put this, <clears throat> because this is one of our fa fastest, most frequent paths here. Okay, Metsum, I copied this twice, it seems. Don't need this one. That's what we that's what we need. We could go to next code here.
and we could actually directly jump oh but this we still need to check this Hey, we broke the code. How did we break the code? Oh, probably, yeah. Because we, we, yeah. We are not allowed to, we are not allowed to skip this check.
Oh, I'm getting again some thermal problem, I think. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's not a keeper, and it's also it's ugly. So let's just get rid of that. That was would be too much complication of the control flow to be worth something that is probably in the noise. I'm still thinking that maybe speeding up the two byte sequences could be worthwhile. For the two byte sequences, If you want to treat them specially, we would unroll this here once, then have this, this loop again like this. And then we would Then we would put a special case here if prefix code that would be our two That will be our special case for two byte sequences.
<clears throat> and the interesting case here would be uh, if we have a two byte sequence uh, and this two byte sequence fits immediately into the buffer. No idea if uh, if such a complicated check can speed anything up, because then we could immediately write it to the buffer. We wouldn't need the replay buffer at all. And we could basically, we could go to here At least it seems to work, so we did not mess up. That's the lowest number we have seen so far. Actually, one once we saw 47, but that was a fluke.
Yeah. This looks like a marginally significant improvement. We could maybe make this a bit cleaner by I think the final thing I want to try is to tweak the data types a bit. Okay, that doesn't look so good. Okay, the better version we had was this one. Yeah, for some reason this performs better, marginally. Let's see if this check we could also check it like this. Because we know that DSD is not DSD end.
Yeah, I mean, probably the same. Cannot imagine that this makes really a significant difference. So the last thing I want to try is Actually, one thing I want to try is to to unlocalize this. Because we saw before that too much localization can actually hurt us. No, but that's that's not good. So this really helped, it seems. Yeah, that's definitely worse. So let's just try making this 32 bit. No, this one. Probably will give some warnings. No, no. No, maybe this helped. Maybe some better instruction generation for the 32 bit. I guess 16 bit are really the it's really the most awkward data type currently. And then also try if changing the 8 bit to the 32 bit is an advantage. But probably 8 bit is handled better by the instruction set than 16 bit. Yeah, that, that looks like an improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a slight improvement. Again, now yeah, just bit by bit. And now let's see 
Mm. If we make these also. <clears throat> that does not seem to help. No, that doesn't help. So let's keep that. Previous code we have not put in a register. We could try putting it into a 32 bit register. This is something we have not yet tried, I think. That's funny. It seems it really doesn't like the previous code to be in a local variable. Yeah, it doesn't like it. I don't know why. Is the reservoir also a 16 bit? No, it's 32 bit. Okay, that's it. I think I'm I'm done for today. Oh, we have something that's still to be implemented here. We might also look here at 
simplifying this. One thing I still want to try, the final thing, I swear it's the final thing for today. Is to move these cases down. Not better. Okay, back at the nice numbers. So let's wrap up. Let's run a final test. And we did come quite a way from fifty seven, fifty eight thousand to 48,000. <laughs> I 
Everything is still working. So all together, what was our latest mean? It was Sixteen point five percent speed up. That's not too bad for a few hours of work. Let's see how how much larger our code has become. Yeah, it's um, from 170 lines to 200 lines, so 30 lines added. That's not too horrible. I really would like to simplify this stuff. But also, it's probably time to get rid of the deeper code just to clean things up. Yeah, this this here this got uglier, of course. It's the question if this this was really worth it. Okay, people, that's it for today. So, 
everything is working. We gained more than 16% speed and it's all good. And so thanks for watching. I hope to see you again. And have a nice day or other appropriate time of day. Bye. See you.